All right. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, all across the globe, welcome to another edition of Power Connections with Kevin Vaughn and my wonderful, wonderful guest, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Michelle Miller as well here with me today. Michelle, before we get started, how are you doing today, sis? <laughs> all is well. Thank you for asking. Oh, yes, man. Happy New Year to you, Michelle. And uh, we're excited about being with us today. That's wonderful. Hey, guys, thank you so much for those listening live right now, those listening later on. Appreciate your time today. Hey, uh, Power Connections is all about bringing in powerful people, guys, to talk about what they're doing with their wonderful lives, with their family, with their community, with their business. Uh, they may have a career that we bring on uh, and talk about that as well. But we're going to be talking to Michelle about uh, her background and her life as well, guys. But welcome to Power Connections, guys out there. Hey, guys, I want you to share this out on the network, okay? Uh, you may learn a few things when Sister Miller shares a few things with us. You may uh, find out you may have some things in common, or you may learn something today as well, right? That, right is that right, Michelle? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, Amen. Hey, guys, thank you so much for being with us again. This is Power Connections. Well, first of all, Michelle, you know, one thing I always ask our guests to say, a lot is going on today. Oh, man. We could talk for hours just talking about what's happening around the planet today. But anything you'd like to open up with, anything you'd like to say, uh, this morning or this afternoon and this evening, no matter when people are listening to this on Power Connections. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Um, first of all, thank you for having me on. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, we had a great connection uh, yeah. with a friend. Yeah. And um, she was 100% correct. Um, you are fabulous. Your platform is fabulous. And I'm glad to be a part um, of it on today. Yeah, and you. Uh, you asked me one thing that I wanted to say yeah. about today. One thing is always, always remember mm -hmm. that past, though yeah. it doesn't totally dictate our future, it wow. does, however, give us a glimpse mm -hmm. of past what could happen in yeah. the future and always be keep yourself prepared yeah. uh, and yeah. see the same lesson come mm -hmm. around in different ways yes. um, in your own life and in some friends that I do know and so I wanted to, to say keep in mind to to just be prepared be armed and be ready so yeah. that are able to move forward and, and push forward, recognize when lessons are coming and mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. that even though they may be of the same nature, there right. might there may be a new a new um a new avenue that yes. you that you're uh you're a you you're having to tackle so yeah. to speak. Yeah 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 really That's put right Oh, I love it. Yeah, thank you so much, Michelle. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking to Michelle Miller, ladies and gentlemen, on uh, Power Connections today, and we're just excited about that. Thank you so much. You know, one thing, Michelle, you brought up while you was talking, I was just thinking, you can't lose hope, folks. You cannot lose hope. You got to keep it going, guys. Now, I know there's a time, you know, people have lost loved ones. We understand that. Now, there's a time for that. Everything is time, but you can't lose hope, right? You have to be able to, there's a time and season, there's a great book, it talks about there's a time and a season for everything, guys. But guess what, guys? We've got to learn to move forward. I'm not saying it's always easy to do, but you got to surround your people, uh, yourself with people who are going to help you uh, navigate that. Do not do it by yourself, folks. You don't have to be by yourself. As you know, uh, Michelle, some people think it's they're just them. You know, they don't have any friends, any people to confidants and all that good stuff. We understand that. But please reach out, guys, to others around you that you can trust, first of all, and uh, be able to help them as well. So even that part today, uh, Michelle, is hard, hard to navigate. Who do you trust, right? Especially if you're a young person, you don't know who to trust because you don't have enough information about them yet. So we want to just encourage you not to lose hope. Well, Michelle, one thing we want to ask about is a little bit about you because uh, we don't know you yet, right? And you can go back as far as a baby where you was born or if you want to, <laughs> whatever. But tell us a little bit about your background, if you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> I am from Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. Um, right. I was born and raised in, in Brooklyn, born at the Brooklyn Hospital, go figure. Wow. <laughs> and wow. and I, I grew up 
they are mostly uh, up to was 17 years old. Kind mm -hmm. of a tumultuous uh, upbringing though. Wow. Uh, the great influences, uh, tumultuous meaning I never really stayed with my biological mom for too long. Um, my sister and I, there's two of us. Um, yeah. We went into foster care at an early age, uh, age two and three till we were five. We were listed as a special case. Um, really? Oh. We were listed as a special case. My mother at the time was, was young and that was at the time when mm -hmm. When mothers, uh, if they were outborn, uh, if they were having babies out of wedlock, they were sent to these homes. Wow. Anyway, my sister and I, we we actually, I know, right? <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. But Ooh. that that was the time that you know, in in the late sixties. Yeah. Uh, that notwithstanding, I had lots of families that had different influences on my life. Um, there were lots of good things happening and lots of not so good things happening too. So trying to navigate that as a young person uh, was kind of extremely difficult. Not kind of, it really was difficult. You know, you never knew if you were, if you were loved in this place or if somebody was going to abuse you in this uh, other place. Or, so it was really, it was really crazy. Uh, group homes, not yeah. loving that. So there was a lot of, um, turmoil as far as uh fighting fighting people off I just remember a lot of fighting and when I say fighting you know that was fighting my own self in my own mind fighting mm. my fighting mm. off of me fighting the biological whew, biological stuff let's yeah. just put it from, from yeah. parents who were supposed to care and right. you know I I I think as an older person, I look and say, well, maybe they did the best that they could. Right. You know, but um, I was, uh, I'm a product of, I'm a product of quite a bit of abuse, but mm -hmm. learning how to get through that. Left oh. New York at 17 and mm -hmm. went to college. <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, right. The, yeah. I was awarded the court at the time. And in New York City, they do pay, they will pay for your education mm -hmm. stay in New York. But I was smart enough to know that there were so many influences yeah. that I never made it in college. So I went, I went to Tuskegee University and I studied business economics. Yeah. And that was a pivotal point. I met so many people who really Ooh. helped about friends. I've met some friends that really, I'm still friends with them to, to this oh, day. That's, so yeah. that's yeah. also how I learned how to navigate through some, some life challenges and um, be able to advocate for myself a little bit. But I said, hey, that, that's what you do, right? Got married at an early age. Right. I was 22 when I got married mm -hmm. and um, we had a baby at uh i think i was 22 yeah <laughs> i was 22 23 somewhere yeah. around there. yeah yeah i have one daughter uh, my husband unfortunately passed uh my husband has he had uh, testicular cancer mm -hmm. something that was a you know it's just always a fight yeah. you learn how to navigate and fight through that right. i had my mother his mother and father were very overbearing folks and right. You know, knowing that I didn't have a strong back backbone with my family situation, they really try to take over. So right. all I know is I learned quickly about how to care for somebody with cancer. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, you know, I did a lot of searching and understanding research and really being the advocate for my husband at the time up until he passed. Yeah. yeah. God bless you. What a great wife. I love it. That's wonderful. Yeah, and then, yeah I learned the power of uh, yeah. love somebody unconditionally. And the the part in the marriage vows, when you say in sickness and in health till yeah. death do us part, that became a true reality for me. So, um, but that marriage and the, the production of the child who is yeah. now, I think that child is 31 years old now. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, I never thought that I would be a mother, much less a wife. Right. So 
that was extraordinary for me. And now I'm in, I'm a patriarch, right? <laughs> who, who knew? But, you know, in between all of that, you know, learning, learning myself and growing my, uh, with with friends and family and just reaching out and talking to other people besides myself. Right. Lots, you know, lots yeah. of getting depressed about not you right. know, what I didn't have and what I yeah. wanted to achieve. And, you know, I just really uh, latched on to some really, really great people who were able to help me. And so in that help, um, things that I wanted to do when I was younger, like um, in New York and not having, envisioning, oh man, maybe one day I can have a house or right, maybe right. I can have a business. And yeah. it really came true. I, I never yeah. thought that would have been possible till I moved to Atlanta. Amen. So, Hallelujah. Yeah, <laughs> moved to Atlanta. <laughs> And um, all along the way, I think that the, besides my friends and some great family members and the great uh, backbone with some of the families that I'm still close to today, um, oh. there's a handful of families that I'm still close to today that were my foster oh. parents. Um, yeah. There wow. was the arts. Yeah. So yeah. The uh, arts uh, was a godsend to me. Yeah. yeah. Really, I learned, I mean, I was a, a vocalist, I was a, a dancer yeah. and, and an actress. So I wound up yeah. doing what I do, you know, what I did best, which was right. giving back to my community, yeah. Yeah. giving back to uh, young people. Yeah. And uh, so I, I've um, mentored oh. young people, um, especially because, you know, they they thought I looked so polished. And then, yeah. yeah. oh, man, you said, Oh, Miss Michelle has probably never been through anything. Oh, she doesn't know what I'm going through. Right, right. right. I shared my life with. Uh, they, they too began to understand. Like, oh, yeah, wow. No, everything wasn't perfect for her. No, she did. Oh my gosh, she went through so much. But look right. at where she, look at where she came out. So yeah. they themselves to me. Who knew? <laughs> so exactly. in general, you know, be. Besides that, um, just navigating through life was challenging, yeah. but also rewarding. And so I yeah. was able to give back to other people, not just my young people, but also to uh, sisters or yes. yeah. no, sisters, women that I called sisters who asked for advice, who asked for help. So yeah. throughout the years, that has been that has been the the my driving force uh, to connect with people and yeah. really yeah. help them get to where they want to be, especially when they feel like they don't have, right. um, they don't have, and they're unable to, and they, they're at a stopping place and they think, oh my gosh, this is it. You know, and then I'm like there to pull them on and go, no, this is not it. Let's keep right. it moving. As you right. Right? There you go. Let's Let's the show. Yeah. Not stop because that right. is just a small blocker that as soon as we can we'll find a way to navigate through it and once we get through it yeah. watch what on the other side so yeah. you know up to where i am now and oh. um wow i was with uh, the live out loud movement uh who knew that i'd be doing that <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. But, yeah i'm i'm so unapologetic in how i respond to things and and how yeah. creative i may be with getting around situations yeah. that we would stop other folks. Right. The Live Out Loud movement is about bringing sisters, women together to yes. empower them to, you know, um, especially when they're having difficult, yep. difficult times, just yep. to bring them through, keep yep. them encouraged, and give them real tools yeah. that they can use to make it. Because this world is not, is not nice all the time. Oh, oh, right. That's right. That, that is so powerful, Michelle, because I, as you was talking, I was just thinking, we don't get any instructions coming into this life, right, on how to live, right? We don't get a manual say, hey, Kevin, follow the rules here, follow this way. And I guess what? Then when you get married and have a baby, you don't get no instructions with that. You know, how do I how do I keep the baby? How do I handle how do I raise the baby properly? You know, all that good stuff. So what a powerful journey. 
the thing is that you're still here. Woo! Still here. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now I can do a see God. You can do, you can always look back and see God. You can't necessarily see him when you're going through something or before it happens, but definitely, man, God was with you and is with you right now. Absolutely. No, got it. Woo! Could not have done it. I there are so many times where no, I no. didn't want to get out of the bed. I didn't want to right, move forward. Right, right. Yeah, same here. Just, yeah, having those talks with God, you you think yeah. that, you know, that's when you know that He is real. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. because you can sit there and be like, hey Lord, why yeah. is this happening? You know, we always go, why is? Yeah. Why there are things that have to take us out of our comfort zone right, and right. Us to the next level. And in order yeah. to do that, unfortunately, you got to go through something. Right. right. You know that God is God and yeah. he, he says he is. And yeah. there was enough for me. That right there has always pulled yeah. me through because I can talk to God and be like, hey, do you have to be so extreme? <laughs> And he's like, yeah, because, you know, I was trying to whisper it to you. I was trying right, to send right. messages. I was doing all of this stuff. And you were not listening. And, right. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm like, okay, I get it. I get uh, it. What do we need to do right now, Lord, so that I can continue to move forward? Because yeah. whatever this is, I, you've already told me you're going to handle it. So I may not know how you're going to handle it, but right. I trust. I there trust you go. You. That, that I that's it that's it sister miller right there when you get to that point that that's all you can do is trust god that's all you can do i love it hey ladies and gentlemen we're talking to michelle miller oh man i'm just having a great time with her today because we're talking about her journey to where she's at today she is a speaker writer and a wonderful businesswoman as well and so much more we're going to hear more about that today but Michelle, you hit it right on the head there about this area. We're going to segue right into the next part of this interview there. So that tapping into your spiritual powers. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that well, journey. You kind of tapped into it already. But oh, man. That, that part. Woo-wee. Spiritual powers. That took a lot of, gosh, that took a lot of wherewithal to learn. Yeah. Uh, it was not an easy, to yeah. do, an easy task. Yeah, I yeah. would say I'm still learning to tap into. Yes, are. Yeah, same here. Yes, ma'am. Powers. Every but day. what I have realized is one thing is there's always so much going on in my life. Always. There's always, you know, yeah. kids need this, grandkids need this, work needs that. You know, <laughs> you, know you gotta, oh, the house is this, and you gotta fix I, that, and you gotta, I, oh, you gotta do this and pay attention to the business, all of these wonderful yeah, things. Yeah. And they can take away from your time yes. with your God. And yeah. so, so one thing I started understanding was I had to start writing down. And I am I was the worst proponent for writing. <laughs> I'm gonna say right, an author, right? right? Worst proponent for writing because one fear, I had fear that, oh well, maybe people won't believe me. Or, or I will really find the time to do this. Or, yeah. Lord, what? I, I don't know what to. So what happened was, he just told me to just, just write. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he would give me journals, and I'd look at these journals, and I'd go, but it's a blank page. What am yeah. I supposed to do? Right. And so quieting my mind was what that taught me how to do quieting my mind moving yeah. away from the situation at yeah. hand was usually always something big um, yeah. that's something big that just happened the, uh, yesterday right. um, the something big knowing that that something big is not something that I can handle and I'm okay with right. saying and so yes. my superpower is Learning how to trust with mm -hmm. no holds barred. So yes. that means it also means stepping outside of myself. It mm -hmm. also is reflecting. If I don't have an opportunity to reflect, I won't know where to tweak. I won't right. know areas in which to, to just change a little bit, just mm -hmm. my 
inspire a little bit so mm -hmm. that I can be in the right position. Yes. A, a couple of my friends will say this. They'll say, you know, I have watched you. And one thing that I know about you, if you say you're going to do something, yeah. you do it. It doesn't matter. We see, we've seen a couple of years ago, uh, a couple of years ago, I, I'd say 20, 2017, I was yeah. extremely sick, extremely sick to where it was a life or death situation. Wow. And um, how I am sitting up before you, I, yeah. you can see me, I'm sitting up. What I didn't realize is that it takes a lot of muscles to move your neck or to hold your head up. It takes a lot of muscles to talk. It takes a lot of muscles to sit up. How do yeah. I know? Because I lost the ability to do all of it. Wow. wow. To, to do anything for myself. I had to call my daughter in to wow. stay with me because I couldn't even walk. I couldn't wow. walk, couldn't talk, couldn't put the spoon up to my to my mouth to eat. Wow. And here, here was where I really understood what superpower meant. I remember being in so much pain. I had meningitis. Wow. wow. Um, I was in so much excruciating pain. I remember being in the hospital. I think I was at, I was at Grady. Oof. I was at Grady. And I remember they hmm. were trying different medicines to try to get me, to try to get me, um, stabilized pain wise but right. nothing was working you had your morphine you yeah. had morphine is pretty strong but then you yeah. had these other these other medicines nothing worked and it was also at a time when they were uh they meaning like the powers that be were looking at people that that uh were on opioids and so they were thinking, well, maybe, you know, maybe she's just faking this, this pain. I'm like, are you kidding me? So if you, they went from a severe, giving me all kinds of medicine to try to, to get the pain to stop to give me Tylenol. Right. I think I flipped on everybody in that hospital room. I was like, go get your books, wow. go get your wow. this, go get your that, because I, this is not acceptable. Yeah. yeah. So, so much so that uh, that night, because I was in so much pain and they wouldn't prescribe anything else besides Tylenol. Yeah. Kicking the, not kicking, but asking the orderly to leave, asking the nurse to leave and to wow. just pull me up on my walker and leave mm -hmm. my room. When they left my room, mm -hmm. I had to talk with God. I, oh. and the, and I spoke with God for five, yeah. hours. five hours, just Pulling that, pushing that walker, <laughs> pushing yeah. that walker and yeah. talking to God and asking him, what, is this up to death? And I remember God just talking to me going, nope, it's not unto death. You are going to heal. And I'm like, okay, great. Yeah. Why you got to be extreme like this? Yeah. He showed me, it's, he showed me flashes of what happened. And he said, well, you said if I was allowed if I took you off of your job and allowed you to work in your business full time, you would give me more of your time. Mm -hmm. I went, and then you started showing me times when I had the time and I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't fellowship with him. Then yeah. he said there were things that I was doing that he was saying, "Yeah, those are nice," and you gave me just a little bit of credit. But I, this mm -hmm. is thing that I'm doing. This this bigger than you. So mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta realize that I get all of the glory. And I thought, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. And so yeah. and so in that I was like, okay, how long is it gonna take to heal? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Is that gonna happen right now? When? 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 <laughs> like right now? Yeah. Yeah. He didn't give me an answer for that. But right. what he did, right. I stood on the I'm going to heal. And so from that point on, I said, whatever it is, he, I was supposed to write a book back then. Didn't do that. I was supposed to, um, I was supposed to be speaking. Didn't do that. So all of these things that he, he had pointed out, I was like, okay, we are not half-stepping. Mm -hmm. 
when I get well, not if, but when I get well, I am going to do everything that he said to do and then some. It was a two-year journey Ooh. to learn how to walk again, to learn how to use my extremities and to, to think straight. All the while, I got no help from the, you know, social security is where you would go. I got no help from them. They said that because I was Ooh. so articulate, they said, well, she's um no she can go to work doctors were saying oh no she's she's yeah it looks like she's not well but um when mm -hmm. i look at her and i talk to her she seems like she's an able-bodied person so two years fighting i almost lost my house i did lose my car i lost um shoot my credit went to went to crap <laughs> but i will say this every that I lost, I got back 20 zillion times better. Um, I was able, able to work two years later. I went to court, took social security to court and I sued them. And when I sued them, I specifically, you know, I said, what is in my record that you would think that, it, that, that I can maneuver? What made you think that? All right. The judge said, hey, in here, it says that you're not compliant with your medicines. And I'm like, what medicines would those be? And so I have a, I have a, what they say is an incurable um, disease. Mm -hmm. And so they said, well, you, you weren't taking your medicine. I said, that's a bunch of mess. I wouldn't be here. <laughs> that, that's for one, but I yeah. hear what you're saying. I said, well, but okay and and i asked her i said you know do you know how like my attorney said hey tell her how many times you got shingles wow. shingles is very painful yes yes Some, if if your if your clothes touch your skin I, I, it burns like crazy wow. i had shingles four times so I, I asked, do you know what that's like? Do you, have you ever, do you know anybody? She says, yeah, my husband just went through that. He was in a lot of pain. And I said, did he get medicine? She said, yes. I said, so they gave him painkillers. She said, uh, yes. And they believed everything he said, right? She said, yes. I said, I, when I knew it was coming on, because I, I got to the point where, oh, I knew it was coming on. Right, and I wow. said, when that happened, I talked to my doctors. And I said, nope, you're not giving me that medicine because... All I really need is a painkiller because right. that virus, it is going to have to run its course. There's nothing you can do. Right. So I said, so they, they marked me non-compliant for that. They marked me non-compliant for, for, for reading and, and researching and saying, I'm going to take this medicine versus this medicine. Nope, I'm not doing that. And I said, but that's the bottom line is I spoke up for myself. And yeah. so your husband spoke up for himself and he got what he needed, but I didn't. Right. And so, so then I get labeled as someone being difficult, but it's not. I'm just advocating for myself. Right, right. And that moved that judge mm. so much. Yeah. She picked up the phone and she started calling folks and she was, she says, yeah. if you're on this medicine, what will it do? And how is it? She right. says, I don't even know how you're functioning. I said, that's the grace of God, ma'am. That's the grace of God. And she said, okay. She said, you know what? She went back. She reversed everything that they that they had said because it's in the record. I couldn't, I didn't know it's in the record. No worries. She took that. I won, <laughs> by the way. I got back exactly. for the two yeah. years. You know, yeah. I was able to start slowly but surely bringing myself up as God had already told me. These things would happen. Right. So, so wow. I, my friends in them, you know, oh, don't, I was getting ready to go back to work and I was ready. And my friends were like, no, no, don't tell Social Security that you're going to go to work. Don't tell them that because you're going to lose your benefits. I was like, no, for benefits, I want my back benefits, but I'm looking yeah. to stay right. on, on, you know, that kind of help. I, I'm not there yet. Right. So I walked into that court with my attorney and he says, oh, don't worry. You're gonna, he was like, you're gonna do good. We're gonna get you that money that you're supposed to get. And yeah. then we'll 
set it up so that if anything happens in the future, you won't have these kinds of questions anymore. Right, right. Wow. And so that's how I was able to come out. And that's how I found out what that superpower was. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not, it's something we all have in us. Our Holy Spirit tells us what to do. It warns us, it yeah. protects us, it guides us. Yeah. That gives us extra power wow. to withstand and do what we're supposed to do, what we are called to do. And that might be, for me, it's it's mentoring. For me, it's talking to the masses. For somebody else, it might mm -hmm. be, it might be nurturing someone. It might be fixing cars. It, whatever that is, yeah. you can find it if you take that time yes. to stop what you're doing and yeah. listen. Wow. That voice is talking to you all the time. Amen. I love it. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're here with Michelle Miller. We're hearing a powerful testimony of God's goodness and grace and mercy. Guys, matter of fact, Michelle is writing down here two words. You have to have some tenacity today to live, and you better have some courage to live as well on top of that guy, in, in addition to some other things as well. But Michelle, what a wonderful journey. I am just so glad you're here with us today. The bottom line is that we're still here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here. Michelle is here. We thank God for her wonderful life today. Hey, this is Power Connections. If you're just joining us live on the network, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, we're just excited about our guest today being with us. And Michelle, we're about to have you back again because I know we can't even finish all the, all the interview today for sure. This goes the time sake. But I'm so excited about you being with us. What a wonderful journey. What a wonderful area of, of, of exploration, if you will, for yourself, but also to find the real you. You was in, you really finding who you really are, but to hear from God and then be able to accept that, that's powerful right there with the Almighty, and then be able to just trust Him in the process. That's hard to do, folks. That's like walking in the, in the total darkness, but, but God is telling you to keep walking. <laughs> Wait a minute, I don't see nothing. It's just like that, folks. He may tell you to turn around. It's still dark, right? He told you to just turn around. You don't even know which direction you're going. You still got to trust him. Woo! That's powerful stuff there, Michelle. I love it. But, Michelle, one thing I want to do, because we got to have you back again, but, you know, we talk about uh, live out loud. Let's talk about that. And also give us some final thoughts on anything you want to say today to help somebody out there today that's listening. Thank you so much. Yes. Live out loud means living yeah. your truth. It means loving yourself. Yeah, there you go. Loving others, loving yourself yeah. enough yeah. to understand that correction happens all the time. That right. correction doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. It mm. just means it's time to grow and get out of your comfort zone. And sometimes getting out of your comfort zone it's a little challenging. And yeah. so yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like absolutely. Yeah. you can have all these wonderful plans and you're saying, I'm going forward. I'm getting ready to go straight. And what happens is you got friends and yeah. family and folks that know you and maybe don't know you. And they're right. eating all of this wonderfulness in your ear only to put what they feel is protecting you. But if God told you to do something, go do it. And living out loud means just that. And sometimes you might live out loud by yourself for a moment. <laughs> I but, love it. Yeah, but living out loud is really learning how to be your authentic self. And that takes time. Just how we had, you know, when we came into this world, we didn't yeah. know anything. Nope. Didn't nope. know how to walk, talk, move, think, nothing. Yeah. And so live out loud i have a, a program that i created because who told me right and that program is really learning how to find out who that authentic self is and moving forward in boldly yeah boldly and rightly and that's because you're being catapulted catapulted pulled and and taken by the hand and so taken by the hand, live out loud sisterhood. That's what we do. We yeah. take that journey and then we don't leave you alone. We make sure that you have everything you need to get there. 
because it's not going to, it's not always going to be easy. And so we let you know that even though it's not easy, we got you. Right. So that's what the Live Out Loud movement is Ooh. about. Oh, I love it. Hey, we're going to do a commercial break before we uh, do, do some final thoughts there. Michelle, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, social media, phone number, website, whatever you want to give today. And guys, everybody who has any type of uh, media platform, you need to invite Michelle Miller to your platform to interview her if she approves it, guys, uh, so she can get that information out and get this powerful testimony of God's wonderful mercy, grace, and guidance each and every day in her life today. But Michelle, if you will, let's do a commercial break. How can folks get in touch with you? Uh, let's see. I have a website. It's www.liveoutloudnow.com. And in there, there's all kinds of information. It's uh, about anything about my speaking engagements, anything about um, what we're doing. We have some events coming up at the end of this month. We have a oh, spa sorry. retreat. We have a spa retreat coming up uh, that we're inviting folks out to. Um, then there's uh, there's a live out loud. There's a live out loud Facebook group. Um, there is a wow. What else is there? Oh, there's a YouTube. And the YouTube is Michelle Miller, right? Just just my name, M E C H E F M I L E R. Uh, my Facebook is also the same, Michelle. It is I am Michelle. See that over there? <laughs> yeah, and I love it. That's beautiful, Michelle. I love it. I love it. Great colors too. I love blue. My Thank favorite you. color. Thank you. But that's how you can you can get out get out to me. Send me a text. Uh, send me a um a DM. Instagram. Yeah. It's also I am Michelle. Yeah. Real Amen. simple. Can't if you if you don't know, you just search for it. So Amen. and it's M E C H E L. And oh. other than that, you know, that's and I'm always always have an ear, always have my ear to the ground, and I'm always always looking and always um, ready to help the next person. Oh, I love it. Hey, guys, you can see why she's a uh, power connector this month, guys. She's our power connector uh, leader today. And we're just excited about uh, her wonderful, wonderful life. We're excited about you guys listening. And we trust that you guys are enjoying Michelle on Power Connections with Kevin Vaughn. We're just thrilled and excited what God is doing in her life. And guys, you should be excited about what, you, what God is doing in your life as well today. And I want you guys to have a media. Again, anybody has a media platform you guys need to invite her on your show to be able to share this powerful, powerful testimony of God's mercy, grace, and love each and every day in her life today. Matter of fact, she was talking about her uh, daughter, I believe, uh, that's in her 30s. I thought she was in her 30s. Man, she looked like you know, she's in her 30s. So God is so good. He'll reverse your age for you as well, I guess. or will keep you at, uh, at a certain age looking anyway, <laughs> for sure. So we thank God for that. As well, God is so amazing, and we do give him all the praise and glory and honor. Well, Michelle, any final thoughts there? Anything, anything I'm just gonna anything you want to say as we wrap this up here before you just cause the time sake. We're gonna have you back. You're always welcome to be back on the program so we can share a little bit more deeper and and uh, let people know a little bit more about Michelle Miller. Any final thoughts now? Yes, love is the medicine. There you go, sis. <laughs> There you go. That's it. One word. That's it. Love is the medicine. Ooh, I love it. Understand how to love. Yeah. I love it. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. And ladies and gentlemen, we know that some people don't feel love. We understand that. They don't feel love because they don't get it. But guess what, guys? It's not about them. It's about us, right? It's about us at this point and you and God. And one thing and Michelle mentioned that she had, she kicked everybody out of her room and when she was in the hospital and had a talk with God. Now, we ain't talking religion here, folks. We're talking, I need to hear from the creator. Now, you may not, out there and around the, around the globe, you may not even believe there's a creator, but at some point, we're going to ask God to help you understand that. Because <laughs> you may have to just kick everybody out of the room and say, wait a minute, God, I don't believe in you, but you better show yourself to me and help me understand because I need you right now. It could be something that's going on in your life that you just need somebody that's not human, right, in your life to help you understand what's going on. And for those of, who are believers out there, guys, you know what to do. You need to pray. You need to fast. You need to ask God to just help you and then trust the process as Michelle has done uh, in her wonderful, wonderful life. 
Shell, this is just a great time to be alive, isn't it? Just a great time to be alive. Woo. So much uh -huh. unfolding before our eyes. Yeah. God yeah. said that he, he yeah. take care of us and he would right. take care of us. And you can see that unfolding yeah. in our lives every day, yeah. but you see some truths yeah. now being uncovered in the world. And I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, so. absolutely. And I think that's the ultimate goal is that God, you know, there's this part in the word of God that talks about God just wants to be God and we be our people. That's paraphrase there. He just wants to be God, which he is. And we just be his people. He really just wants to take care of us. Okay, all we have to do is just do what he said, though. That's the thing right there, Michelle, is to do it his way and not our way. That's the part I had to learn. You got to, you know, obviously you got to be responsible, right? We're not, God gave you responsibilities, guys out there, but you got to understand God is who he said he is, get a relationship with him. And matter of fact, Michelle, we got to come back and have you talk about relationships, right? With God and relationship with other people as well how important that is today. So uh, we're so excited, but God wants to have a relationship with you guys. And again, it's not religion. It's just a fact of life. If you just think this whole universe and everything we do on this planet has just happened, uh, you're sadly wrong, okay? I don't have to be no scientist or a, or a high believer for that one. I mean, it just makes sense that there gotta be a God that put everything together, Michelle. It just makes sense when you just start thinking about it. So we thank God for his awesomeness and who he is. And we thank God for revelation, Michelle, that the fact that he's revealed himself to us, called us, and that we accepted it. You know, what little bit I know about him, we believe it. <laughs> you know, we know he is real. he's real. He is a real God. And, and his son is real. The Holy Spirit's real. Holy Spirit is with us right now, uh, guiding us and, and blessing us. And Jesus is with us and the uh, Father is with us, all the above. But we just thank God for your wonderful life. Uh, that he has brought you to this day and, and beyond. But uh, what exciting time we are in. I uh, love it. I love it. Hey, Michelle, before we go here, about four more minutes here, uh, any final thoughts there? Anything you want to share before we close out today? Thank you so much. Um, get that relationship with God. It is so ultra important. So ultra important. Um, that's the biggest thing, that the, the biggest takeaway. And... Yeah. Um, for women, I want to help them get there. So yeah. I'm helping them get there, like I said, I do have a, a retreat coming up. Um, yeah. it's on It's on uh, Friday, January 26th and the 27th. And, and it starts out with self-care, yeah. loving yourself. And then being in a, being in a circle with like-minded people who will help you to understand how you can get there to loving yourself and yeah. to coming outside of who you are and really doing versus saying, I'm going to do. Our words are so powerful. Yes, they are. Stop talking bad about yourself. Stop. Right. Or stop not talking, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Start putting into action what you already know your spirit is telling you to do. That is, that is God talking to you. So, those are the those are the biggest takeaways that yeah. I really want to to share with folks. Hey man, thank you so much. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking with Michelle Miller, ladies and gentlemen, and we're excited. She's a wonderful speaker, writer, and also a businesswoman, and so much more. She's probably mentoring some other women, I'm sure, as well, and helping them out to navigate. She's also a wonderful orator, as you can tell there. She loves to talk. I love it, and she can speak well, and we're just excited about that. Michelle, this is what we just thank God for your journey. Wow, thank God for your life today. And just, we can always go back now and say, wow, yeah, God was with us because, uh, you know, if it was up to me, I probably wouldn't be here, you know, because I would have had different choices for some reason, you know. So we thank God for your life today. We thank God for your life as well, those listening around the globe. Thank you so much, too, as well. Hey, guys, if you have a media platform, I want you guys to invite uh, Michelle Miller to your platform as well. you got a podcast, you got digital television, uh, Zoom, StreamYard, all the above. You guys invite her out uh, on an interview as well uh, so people can share uh, and hear about her wonderful journey with God, one of her, her wonderful journey in her own life. And how about this one, Michelle, discovering who you really are? Discover, yeah. It's oh, going to uh, be great. It's holding it. Yeah, yeah that's a Yes. Yeah, that's a whole nother show with you right there. So that's our goal, guys. One of my personal goals, guys, just to share a little quick 
is to be in a hot pursuit of finding a real Kevin Vaughn. And you got to want to do that, guys. Get better every day. That's what Michelle has encouraged us to do. Get better every day. Okay, the, the, remember the old is gone, guys. The old, don't look back uh, last year, right? Look to the future, right? Look for the new day, new changes. Don't bring those old habits and those old things forward with you, guys. We got to improve ourselves each and every day. Michelle is here to help women all across the globe to do just that, to give them that courage, the resources, uh, the support uh, that they'll need to continue life as uh, they see it, as, as they need it. But guess what it's all about? It comes down to love. And relationships, guys, you've got to have the love for people. And you also have to have relationships that are healthy with people so you can help them grow each and every day. Well, Michelle Miller, thank you so much for being with us today on Power Connections. You are always welcome back. Uh, all we got to do is put it on the schedule because I own the network. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Man, so we own this time. So we thank God for the technology that we can use. Uh, one thing, guys, I didn't have to uh, send my limo out for Michelle to come to the studio. So we did uh, did a virtual today. So appreciate you so much, Michelle, for your time today. <laughs> I love it. So much. Thank you so thank much. You. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Hey, guys, we're going to leave you with this. Hey, to remember to always out love, out serve, and out forgive each other. And remember that Jesus is Lord. Hey, if you ever need some help uh, getting in touch with Michelle, give me a holler, guys. I'll make sure you get that website and information there. But I wanted you guys to share this out, share this out on your platforms. And also guys, uh, invite Michelle to your platforms if you have a podcast, again, or a digital platform uh, where you can interview uh, guests like this. So Michelle Miller, thank you so much for your time. Happy New Year again, my sister. Appreciate you. All right. God bless you. All right, take care folks. Y'all have a wonderful day. Guys, be intentional and be on purpose. Bye-bye now. This has been Kevin Vaughn and Michelle, Michelle Miller on Power Connection.